Welcome to another Bitcoin price analysis video. I mean, the pattern in Bitcoin for me is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but it makes a lot of sense. We're in a wave D and I want to explain to you why I thought this was actually something else going lower here. I mean, it's going to go lower in the future but not before we hit $289,000. Now, when I first realized this the other day, I needed to take some time to really think about if what I'm seeing is actually true. So I went back to XLM and it makes sense what's going on there. But this here is pure confusion. But obviously to those who are complete bulls, it's not confusing at all. We just buy and hold um, by the dip. Except if you don't know when to get out, you will lose it all from here, from that point, right? You you would just you go back to where you are now, or back to uh, basically the lows, right? Because I know through my analysis that at least the C wave gets retraced in D waves, right? But I want to break it down to you because I, I want to I want to show you well how complex this pattern is and and why. So we had a wave A, you know, the whole 2020 saga, 2021, move down, move up, A, B, C, A, B, C. Okay, fine, A, B, C. I'm looking for D. Well, it turns out D, E was tiny at the bottom. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of looking at little waves and saying, oh, that's a DE. I, I really, I learned so much from the waves. It's ridiculous how much I learned from the waves. It turns out that this little move down here is a DE pattern. That was the start of wave C. I am disturbed, put it that way. But fine, who cares? We move forward. This will be over soon. Don't worry. Well, this, this move that's going up will end at $289,000. That's a big move, right? We all know that. It's a massive move. What the hell is worth that much? Nothing. Okay. It's pretty cool. That's not the point. I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to say that this insane pattern is, it will end, right? And then we'll go into another insane pattern, but that's, that's a different story. So here we have this pattern here, which obviously if you try to count that as a wave three in the middle, it's shorter than both other waves. So it must be a wave D. And the E wave is pretty clear here. It's a five wave move and we broke it and we never came back down below it. Amazing. That's true. That's fine. The rest of it is insane. Wave one, A, B, C, no, sorry, that's that's not right. A, B, C. See, that there doesn't even look right in terms of a C wave. It's got a very small wave one. One, two, three, four, banking crisis five. Okay, cool. So wave C, okay, D wave is huge. So basically D waves within a D wave, uh, is huge but it's the d wave of wave two so we had a wave one right we had a b c d is huge right so you had the a portion in brackets the b went down here that's what this move was it was a wave e that is basically wave c it, this is a type two expanded zigzag right which means the internal portion expanded like absolute madness right so this this here is the five wave move week this is the sharp beginning and everything in between is corrective but corrective in a pretty massive way because of the way that it moved and etc it's pretty pretty crazy right all right, cool. So what does that mean? It means that that was an E wave down at the highs there. That was an E wave. That was the end of the 
wave two. So we're in wave three now. This is wave three. So what I was, what I got into here at the lows was actually the beginning of like a third of a third of a third wave, whatever, right? Okay, cool. So how do we get into this trade? Well, I mean, I already know, but I'm sort of trying to explain it. How, how do you get into this trade if you want to continue to trade it higher? Now, before I answer that question, I just want to remind you that from current levels, right, XLM will produce a 3,000% gain from current levels. From current levels, Bitcoin will only produce about four to five hundred percent gain, right? I could be wrong because when there's crazy mania in the market, it can go higher. It, it, there's never any rule against it. But the problem is that you take a risk when you do that, right? You take a risk riding that up. If you don't get out at the top, 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 you will basically you'll lose because it'll come back against you. Now, this is why I believe we, wave Ds are their fake out waves, right? They're breakout waves, but they're fake out waves. They look like they're moving up, people start to get in, and then you get the wave E down. Now, this is a really big version of a correction. So you're going to get a massive dump. So this is like a basically like a pump and dump about to happen right here, right? So, yeah, I mean, a measured move would be, how did I get 289,000? Well, I just measured, I just measured wave A, right? So wave A of the wave D, and then from the end of wave, oh, come on, from the end of wave um, E, it's basically roughly about, it's about that much, right? There's, it, it's just a number I'm throwing out there because of the measurement I did. Right, it might even be like yeah, you know, two hundred and eighty thousand, or it could be three hundred thousand, or it could be it's probably not going to be less than the wave A, but that that's not the point. The point is that we're in wave three. We had a massively expanded wave two, which I don't know. I mean, your guess is as good as mine as why it did that, but what does that mean? for way four when it happens and i believe that it means that we'll get to a certain point we'll dump and then we'll it'll it'll look like the market is going down and then it'll shoot back up it'll basically drive people into it even more before it dumps that's what i think is going to happen here but that's just typical of a bubble wave right a bubble wave d I've seen it happen many times, right? And it and it when it takes off, it really spikes, and then it completely reverses. Now, let's go to the smaller degree, so I can I could talk about, you know, if you want to get in. So this is my idea of where to get in. We've already put put that video out, uh, that post or whatever, but I didn't explain it much, right? So let me let me try and label this a bit, right? So basically we had a wave one, yeah. It's a wave one at the lows. I mean, that's what that thing was in the end. No surprise. Wave two, I could definitely say is there because we traded this up. We made profits on the way up here and then confusion set in and then things started to happen and blah, blah, blah. I think that what, what's going on here is that we basically created a one, two, one, two pattern, right? So that would end would have ended there. Let's just let's just do it like this, right? One, two, one, and two ended here. Oh, stop doing that. All right. Now, now mind you, I, I've made some pretty cool calls on on some of the small degree moves there to make some profits on and that, but but it's but it's nothing compared to what's coming, obviously. But so how do we, you know? Okay, so that's a pretty big stop if you if you want to get in. So we have to dig a bit deeper, right? Now, before we do that, I just want to sort of lay out this wave two because because that's what I do, right? I like the waves. Now, I believe it ended like 
basically there. I thought it was an A, B, C, uh, hang on, A, B, C, D, E, right? So I thought this was an E wave because it looked weird like one. Turns out it's actually a, a wave C, right? So we had a sharp wave A, which is very sharp. You can't even tell it's a zigzag. Have a B. These are way too big. Let me shrink them a little. Okay, a B, and mind you, E's and C's are both five wave moves, so that's fine. So that's C. And then we had a, a, a five wave move up. I was right about that, except I was wrong about the whole pattern, which that was just the first part of a three wave move, which is a wave D, right? This is why I said uh, long trade idea, because I knew that, but I. I I was, my mind went off in different places. It started to think, hang on a minute. If this is actually already a wave D, like C of a D in progress, then what the, f what happened back there? So, uh, and then I gravitated to XLM because I thought, hang on a minute, if this is going to shoot up. So, so I just went in all directions, right? So naturally I, I, I went to XLM. But now I'm back to just just to cover off on this stuff because it's just freaking crazy, right? It's amazing what's going to happen and it's historical, etc. But we want to sort of try and I want to try and basically give you the keys to get in, like the ideas that will sort of help you get into those trades, etc. And there's many more to come. Don't worry, this is just the beginning. It's this this whole thing hasn't even blown up yet. This is just the bubble phase. Okay, so we have wave two. We have a wave one somewhere. I believe it ended up up the top here, right? So let's just say one. I always like to use green to say, okay, this is a third of a third wave type scenario. So just one, one to the top. Okay, cool. So we know that this is critical support down here. 43, sorry, 48,304. That's critical support. And then we've got to look for the pattern, right? The pattern. So what is this going on here, right? Now, I think from just looking at the obvious stuff, you have a zigzag down, a zigzag up. So that's, you know, followed by a five wave move. So that's pretty obvious there, right? It's A, B, C, right? Because if it was going to be anything else, you wouldn't see that combination in that exact order. So what is this now? Well, it's probably a D wave again, you know, that, that whole D wave thing. When you have, once again, you have like a wave A right there. Uh, yeah, fine. We'll do it that way. Okay, because remember, these corrections happen at all degrees in every single corrective portion of a move. And we know wave Ds like to expand. So basically this move here, until we get the full wave D, it won't, it, well, it shouldn't, technically not allowed to go below this level right here, right? So that is like the base for, for, the, for the B wave, right? Uh, for, yeah, so we have like again one uh, zigzag. Uh, now, hang on a minute, hang on a minute before we proceed. Let's just let me just have a look at this. Does look like it could be, yeah, a wave A. This could be a wave B, could be. Right, A, B, C, D, yeah, see that? That's not a five wave move. The middle part's got a knot in it. So that's a B, all right, fine. It's a, it's an A, B. So once again, A, B. So what, how is this a C? How is this a C? Is it a one, two, three, and then just sort of corrective wave four? You know what I mean? That that type of thing, okay. Whatever, Let, let's not worry about that too much. But let's just say that 
there's a B wave in progress, right? So there will be a C wave, which will be pretty obvious when it happens because um, it'll be a five wave move that breaks the high more than likely. So whether this is a CDE pattern right now, if it is, then you'd need to see like basically this leg one, this leg two, and then another little leg without breaking the low. All right, so let's just, for now, we label it that way because we don't know, but you know, that can change. But let's just see if this is E, that will complete B and then we'll go for C. So basically that'll make, that'll make the D wave, right? And then you'll get your E wave. Now, after the D wave completes, this support level's invalid, who cares? And then E wave, we don't know where it will end. There's no rule saying that it can't go back and retest the break of the previous wave D. There's no rule, right? So it may or may not do that. At the moment, we look like we are, I suppose, kind of, you know, coiling up a little, creating this, some kind of, you know, triangle pattern, et cetera, which, you know, probably isn't, you know, complete yet, obviously, because we haven't seen D and E. So by the time that happens, we might see another low made here and then we'll break higher if we break above D. And then it'll be one, two, and then third of a third wave will be in progress. Okay, so pay attention to what happens after wave D ends. What happens next? Is it just a small wave E? Uh, I would say that more than likely it won't be that deep, right? Because if it's the third of a third wave, then it's not going to be doing this type of thing, right? It's more than likely going to be stronger and ready to roll, you know, ready to go higher much, much sooner. And because it's a third of a third, I mean, come on, I don't have to really say that again, do I? So that's basically how I see this, right? That's the type of scenario I see. We're in a C of a D. Once we hit that target, be careful and then wait for a drop. And I'll, I'll be, obviously I'll, I'll post ideas on this because it affects XLM and, and other cryptos and I might expand my reach with the analysis to, towards other cryptos, etc. But for now, it's bull until we hit that top. And then watch out. I, I really want to see the mania that develops during this time because this, this has never happened before. I can't think of anything worth this much money that was once like only not long ago worth not much, right? Uh, it's pretty historical, but the recession that's coming is also going to be pretty historical as well. But, you know, one thing leads to another, more stimulus, lower, you know, lowering of rates, creates more inflation, creates higher prices for crypto in the long run. And we all kind of know that's where it's going, but it's not going to get there in a straight line. So it's been a long video, but thanks for watching.